During the beginning of the 17th century, there was three interesting paintings produced by professional painters in Italy. They had several things in common, with the most striking being the sentence in Latin written on a tomb in all three paintings, et in Arcadia ego, which means roughly, in Arcadia I. In Renaissance literature, Arcadia was a very prominent theme used by many writers and painters. The concept came from Greek classic literature and was defined as an idyllic landscape where people lived in peace and harmony, a kind of utopia. In the first painting, painted by the Italian artist Guercino in 1618-1622, two shepherds, being mirrored versions of each other position-wise, look at a skull on a tomb. The skull has a bee on the forehead and a mouse is also watching it. On the tomb is the motto, Et in Arcadia Ego, written. The bee as a symbol can be connected to the Rosicrucian movement. In many paintings by Guercino, Masonic symbolism can be identified, even though the first Grand Lodge was not yet established by the time they were painted. Nearly a decade later, in 1627, a French master painter, Nicolas Poussin, who was active in Italy for most of his career, painted another version. This time we have four shepherds watching a tomb under a tree. The motto is once again written on the tomb. The last painting was created by Nicolas Poussin in 1637 to 1638. This painting is of very good quality and depicts a tomb, the four shepherds and a shepherd pointing towards the motto on the tomb. Then strangely, a hundred years later in the mid-18th century, the late painting by Poussin appears mirrored as a sculpture in the garden of the Shortsborough Hall mansion in Great Haywood, Staffordshire, England. The sculpture was commissioned by the Anson family who lived in the mansion at the time and was planned and designed by an astronomer and mathematician who also worked as a garden designer. The sculpture itself was created by famous Flemish sculpturer Peter Schiemakers. Interestingly, this sculpture in the garden of the Shortsbury Hall also has a very famous series of characters written beneath it. It is the Shortsbury inscription. This cipher, which many believe it is, has never been satisfactorily deciphered. There are many claims, but none that is commonly accepted to be correct. The sculpturer, Peter Chimakers, was active in London and also created another famous statue for the Poets' Corner, a memorial to William Shakespeare. The sculpture in the Shortsbury Hall Garden was created sometimes between 1748 and 1763. Nicolas Fouquet was superintendent of finance to the French king. In 1656, Nicolas Fouquet, for some unknown reason, sent his brother Louis Fouquet, a priest, to Rome. The family Fouquet acted as patrons for painter Nicolas Poussin, living in Rome, and Nicolas and the Fouquets were well acquainted. It was on this occasion that Louis Fouquet wrote the following letter. He, which means Nicolas Poussin, and I discussed certain things which I shall with ease be able to explain to you in detail. Things which will give you, through Monsieur Poussin, advantages which even kings would have great pains to draw from him, and which, according to him, it is possible that nobody else will ever discover in the centuries to come. And what is more, there are things so difficult to discover that nothing now on this earth can prove of better fortune nor be their equal. Why though not kings which is referred to in this letter, managed to draw the secret from him. The French king certainly knew something was up and that it had something to do with Nicolas Poussin. In 1661, he had Nicolas Fouquet arrested on murky charges. He seized all of Fouquet's property and insisted on personally and privately going through Fouquet's paper and documents himself. Coincidentally, in 1665, the same year in which Nicolas Fouquet was imprisoned, Nicolas Poussin died. For the next 20 years, King Louis jockeyed for possession of what he regarded as Poussin's most important work, The Shepherds of Acadia. When he finally got hold of it, he did not put it on public display, but hid it away in his private quarters and let no one view it without his express permission. The 
The law in Paris told me that this facsimile was true to the original size in relation horizontal and vertical. I immediately noticed that one of the shepherds pointed to the R in Arcadia. Directly after the R is C. Could this be RC, the Rosicrucians, that was hinted? Vague but possible. But if R is pointed at as a hint for us to remove it, we get et in Arcadia ego, which would mean in Arcadia I or in Arcadie I. Acadie was the name given to Nova Scotia in 1604 by the French settlers, and the name was used for many years after that. Could this be an instruction? Also, why is the shepherd pointing at a crack in the tomb? His fingertip is placed directly on this crack, and the crack seems to be straight and extended looking like a line. X-ray photos of paintings reveal layers of paint underneath the surface. It is thus possible to see if the painter has painted over some older work. In an X-ray of Poussin's painting, experts have noticed that the staffs are painted before objects in the foreground. In this image, the tomb has been painted over the staff, which means the staff was created on the canvas before the tomb. This is not how master painters from the time painted. They followed strict rules painting backgrounds first and then foreground objects. Are the staffs painted first because they form part of a geometric cryptogram? If so, then it could explain why a shepherd is pointing at a straight crack in the tomb. Maybe we should look for not so obvious lines in the image. Let's follow the instructions. If we have A. The staffs were painted before the tomb, which makes it probable the staffs are to be used with the cryptogram. And B. The bending shepherd points to a line. So let's check all straight lines we have in the image in the same width as the line the shepherd is pointing to. We find that the staffs are hidden behind objects in many places, but they follow straight lines. Also, the leftmost shepherd is actually looking with his eyes in alignment with the two lines on his staff. This is interesting. I then noticed that if I placed the line between the eyes of the rightmost shepherds, I got an exact 37 degree angle to one of the staff lines lower section and then a 90 degree angle directly on the line looked at by the leftmost shepherd. Also, the straight crack in the tomb which the bending shepherd is pointing at hits the first line I drew at a 53 degree angle. This means we have another 345 triangle inside the first. The 47th proposition of Euclid, or the Pythagorean theorem, have been a central symbol to the Freemasons for as long as speculative Freemasonry have existed. In this section from Peter Amazon's book The Organist, we see a distinct pattern spelling apud, which means published by, the rosy cross, or at least cross can be understood to be intentionally created by using a 345 triangle. The structure was found by Amundsen in the first folio. This puts the significance of this triangle to as early as 1623 when the first folio was published. Much later, in 1717, the first Grand Lodge of Speculative Freemasons was formed in London, and in 1723 James Anderson published the Constitutions of the Freemasons. This book has a clear symbol in the center of its front page picturing the Pythagorean theorem. Let's criticize. If I wanted to create 345 triangles, could I not just have drawn a line in 53 degree angle to line A to get the line B? Yes, of course. But how large would the chance be for coincidence to place the three eyes of the rightmost shepherds in alignment with this 53 degree angled line B. And also, if I try turning the line B 90 degrees at different places along the stretch of the line, coincidence just happened to make us hit the lower edge of line D exactly when we turn 90 degrees at the edge of the staff line the first shepherd looks at. And did coincidence also create the fact that the angle between the line C and D are 53 degrees, or between D and B 
37 degrees. It is easy to see that this pattern, if created by coincidence, is extremely unlikely to happen. Of course I have drawn this pattern myself, it is not present on the painting, but for this to be without thought by Poussin when he painted is not believable. <laughs>